Hello my lovelies, welcome to my cottage by the sea, the place where I like to stitch and craft a vintage inspired lifestyle. In today's sewing tutorial I'm going to be sharing with you how I sew a yoke on a blouse using the burrito method. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking Tara but burrito is a yummy delicious food stuff, not something that you sew, but you would be surprised. One of the things that I love about sewing and I love sharing with you are these quick tricks, these little magical moments, these alchemical spells that take your sewing from that's okay to oh my god that's awesome. Let's crack on with this very straightforward and simple step by step where I'm going to take you through how I sew a yoke on a blouse using the aforesaid burrito method. I have the outer yoke here and the, the back panel of the shirt that I'm working on and then I also have the inner yoke or the lining yoke which I've actually had to cut not on the fold but on the whole you would cut on the fold so that's why there's a little seam there and often there are pleats or gathering on this seam line so put those in before we get to this bit and what I do is I tend to lay out the pieces in front of me in the way that they are going to fit together so that you can just double check. So the first thing that I'm going to do is flip this over and right sides to right side I'm going to pin this outer yoke together. Now what I tend to do is I tend to pin at both edges and work my way in and I tend to do this on most seams. So there may be notches that you need to match up, a sort of a central notch and this here and then I tend to pin in the middle there, pin in the middle here and what that does is just if there is any ease, there isn't on this particular garment, but if there is ease in the seam, you can distribute it really easily and get a really lovely finish along your seam. Now that I've done this, I could take this over to the sewing machine and sew just a plain seam at the seam allowance required, which is normally 5 eighths of an inch or 1.5 centimetres. So if you want to do that, you can. If you feel happier basting this or tacking this, you can. That's absolutely fine. I tend to double check that that looks okay. And I do this in one manoeuvre. I'm gonna show you that way in this sewing tutorial. So I have my inner lining here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sandwich this shirt section in between the two yokes. So what we want is for the right side of the lining yoke to be on the wrong side of the body of the blouse or shirt dress, whatever it is that you are working on. And what I do is I line up that side, line up all the raw edges here and then just as I did with the one piece, I pin that there and here I have my seam which lines up with that gathering and with the central fold line here and I pin that and again working my way along to ensure that all of the pattern pieces are beautifully aligned and any ease is accounted for and just make sure as you're doing this that these edges here are nicely aligned and because you've put this pin in before and so on they will be and just before you do go over to the sewing machine to double check that they are actually correct so you can see before you start sewing and then have to undo things you can see that everything is in the right way but 
as I said, if you feel more confident, just do one yolk at a time. But that is how your yolk should look. So I'm gonna go and sew this with the seam allowance all the way along there. And then I'm gonna come back to the table and show you the next bit. I've sewn both the outer, which is this one, and the inner yolk, as you can see. Here's the wrong side, the right side. So I'm happy that everything's as it should be. And it's really important when you're doing this to, to press as you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the seam allowance up into the yolk bit. Just makes life much easier to do this as you go. And before I press that one, I'm just gonna turn that over just make sure that I'm happy with that and maybe you might want to press even more. But the wonderful thing about working with cottons and Liberty cottons in particular is that they are really lovely to press and work with. And what we want to make sure when we're pressing this is that we don't have this bumpy seam because that kind of ruins the effect. And what we want to make sure is that these front yoke, what would be the shoulder, although the shoulder is actually somewhere here, but these are nicely and neatly aligned as is your neck seam. So I'm going to give that a nice press. You might want to use steam at this point because you want to ensure as I've said, that there is no bumpy seam in sight. There we are. And that's now looking pretty good. If you want to, at this stage, you could take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch that in place. I find that quite a lot easier to do before I put the front of the blouse onto the yolks. So what you're going to do now is flip down the inner and make sure that it's laying on the inside like this and not up here because we want to attach our fronts to, to here. So right sides together I'm going to align that seam and just as I did before, I'm going to make sure that that side is nicely lined up and that side is nicely lined up and then in the middle here and it's worth taking the time just to make sure that these edges are meeting nice and neatly. And use as many pins as you feel you need. And if you want to tack this in place before you sew on the sewing machine, that's absolutely perfectly okay. And unlike the back, which I do all the layers all in one go, on this, the fronts, I actually don't do that because I find it easier to sew these outer pieces before I then go on to sew the inner using the very exciting burrito method of construction. So I'm gonna crack on with that and then I'm gonna go over to my sewing machine, sew this again, 1.5 centimeters or 5 eighths of an inch. Now comes for the exciting bit of the process, the actual making of the burrito. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your blouse, shirt, whatever the item is on your table, nice and flat. And you want to make sure that the, the inner yoke is laying flat, opened out rather than up onto this side. So you want the the front yolks to both be laid flat on the table here and that inner yoke to be laid open inside. And it makes life easier. The flatter you can 
sort of get this the better and now it's time to burrito so what you're going to do is you're going to fold your garment item that you're sewing up like this or fold or roll it like this and you'll see that the inner lining yoke appears and what you're going to do is stop when you get to that sort of seam line there bring that inner yoke or the yoke lining up to meet the outer yoke along that seam and you are going to pin that together so make sure that all the edges are nice and aligned along here. This is all nicely rolled up and out of the way. The bulkier the fabric, the trickier and more fiddly this actually is. And what you want to make sure is that when you're sewing these, that there's no way that this is going to get attached into the seam. Because otherwise you'll have to go back and redo. But if you follow these simple steps, this is almost, almost foolproof. And I can often be a fool when it comes to sewing and even I don't get this wrong. So now I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and just sew along here. You can of course tack or baste this. And if you find it easier, you could actually pin from the other way and use your original line of stitching as your guideline. So I've sewn my seams here and you're going to pull through or turn through your, your garment, your blouse. So through that neckline, you're just going to carefully because you don't want to stretch out the, the neckline of your garment. It's probably a really good idea to stay stitch necklines and curved lines, etc. And Voila, here you have a fully lined yoke, very simple to do, very professional results as you can see, all the inner seams are all encased, no annoying hand stitching down, no overlocking, just a very beautifully constructed yoke using the burrito method you need to give it a good old press and if you want to top stitch do that's absolutely fine just depends on the garment and what you prefer but here is the yoke all done and ready thank you so much for spending time with me in my little cottage by the sea today if you've enjoyed yourself found it useful then please feel free to subscribe if you haven't already it's so lovely to have you here and just share my sewing crafting journey with like-minded lovely souls such as yourselves. I hope that wherever you are in the world my loves you are keeping incredibly safe and well and I look forward to sharing more sewing fun with you next time. Bye my lovelies.